Okay, it's uh, really early in the morning, and what I'm about to do is I'm uh, I'm setting up my grill, and I'm about to uh, start my fire, but I have to do some things before I do that. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to set up my grill, so this is how I do it. All right, first, um, what you'll probably notice is I have um, one of the best purchases you could have, which are uh, charcoal baskets. And I have them pushed as far as I can against the wall on each side. And the reason that I do that is uh, so that I can fit the next part of the apparatus in, which is this right here. Um, and yes, I had to bend it a little bit, but basically I'm going to fill this area up with water, probably about just a couple inches high. And then I have um, a grate that allows me to open up the hinges and then put charcoal as we're cooking. But you gotta make sure that this is set up correctly, then you can actually start your fire. So my grill is currently set up correctly. I'm gonna remove this and then I'm actually gonna start my charcoal, which I have already ready right here. And I'm gonna start that here shortly by using a little light. Stick. And now we got the charcoal lit and we need to wait for it to catch fire, which will probably take about, you know, five to seven minutes. And then we'll be able to pour it. Okay, um, so the charcoal is ready to be poured out. So I'm going to pour it out into the two uh, charcoal baskets that I have in here. And I do a little bit at a time. Because as you see, the ones in the bottom are, are more, uh, ignited than the ones at the top. So I try to evenly distribute the ones that have been ignited, the ones that hadn't, okay? The other thing is that I noticed that I didn't pour it as evenly as I would have liked, so I'm gonna, just gonna quickly redistribute some from, from left to right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I have the water pan. I'm going to put that guy in there and lay him flat. And then last but not least, I'm going to fill him up with water. Um, you're going to need the water in here with the brisket because it keeps everything moist and keeps everything going. I'm probably going to put a little bit more water in that in a minute. But basically my grill setup will be something like this uh, where um, I'll be able to access the charcoal by opening up these hinges and uh, but I'm gonna let this get started right quick I actually also need to check my grates and I'm doing it from the side but really they should only be about uh, a third of the way open and right now I can see that they're Ah, there we go. So I got that set up. Just little slits. I'm gonna keep the top uh, open just a little bit in there. And your grill is set up. Now we're gonna let it get hot for a minute and then we're gonna put the brisket on later. Okay, now that I've let the grill get hot enough and let the charcoal start, let the water kind of heat up and get the entire grill acclimated, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put the, the brisket on the grill. Now, I have two briskets and they're this weird shape. Normally I have like one long brisket, um, but this one is going to be a bit different. So I'm going to start with the taller one and I'm going to set him kind of over here toward the edge. And then I'm going to take the shorter one and I'm going to, I'm going to make them kiss each other that way. Now, when you put this on, long story short, this will shrink quite a bit as you're cooking. The other thing is in the other video, I had all this fat that I was going to use. Well, I'm going to use quite a bit of it. Um, I got this piece of meat. This is going to be my breakfast later. <laughs> um, but I have all this fat, and this particular brisket over here did not have as much fat in its layer as it could have. So what I do is I take the extra fat and I kind of put it in places where I feel like there's not enough fat exposed uh, on the on the meat. And what will happen is, is that those pieces of fat will uh, integrate into, uh, into the brisket. So that's the first stage of, of doing this. I'm actually going to move this over a little bit. 
Um, and then we're almost ready to, uh, to let it go for a little bit, but not quite. Uh, I have to do one more step, which will be in the next video. So what I'm going to be smoking the brisket is actually Applewood smoking chips. You can get these at Myers or any sort of Walmart, wherever. Um, and basically you don't need that much, even for a brisket like this. I'm going to be slowly adding these over the course of hours uh, to uh, my charcoal that's burning. I think that might be about it at most. Not very much, really, if you think that I'm cooking for like hours. And then the other thing you got to do with them is you got to put them, soak them in water. And when you soak them in water, it slows down the burning process and it puts up the smoke uh, while it's burning. So you get like, as soon as I put these on the fire, you're going to immediately smell like an apple wood and apple smell in the air that'll... Uh, smoke the brisket. So that's what you do with your wood chips. You don't really need that many. Um, if I was cooking something really small, I probably would have only done like maybe a cup of, uh, of wood chips. But because this is something I'm going to be uh, reapplying over the course of several hours, I have uh, a little bit more. So this is about to go on the fire here in a minute and it'll have an immediate effect on the fire and the smell. And also it'll have us uh, create the smoke ring inside of the brisket. Okay, so now that I've got the brisket started, I got the fire going, we need to start to add the smoke. So basically what you do for this is you set aside, you can even see that some of the fat is starting to render. <laughs> it's a good sign for us. But I'm going to turn the hinges up. And then I'm going to take uh, some of these apple wood chips, shake them off a little bit and I'm going to put them into the fire. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side because we want even flavoring on both sides of this. And if you're here in person, you immediately smell that applewood smell <laughs> like right mm -hmm. away. Um, and that is going to be how we smoke it. So now the next thing that I gotta do as the cook is I have to like keep monitoring this and um, I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna put the rest of that fat on there here shortly uh, but basically I have to continuously monitor this probably every 15 minutes probably in another 15 minutes I'm gonna add some more uh, charcoal um, but I set an alarm for 15 to 20 minutes every single time because if you don't keep an eye on it things will get out of control the other thing that I'm gonna have to do later and I'll do a little video on it on the first time I do it is once this thing gets started, I have to start to apply the mop saw. So that'll be a bit later. Okay, so we're about like 45 minutes to almost an hour into the cook time. And the smoke has already kind of gone away from the wood chips. I've already added some charcoal to continue the fire just a little bit. Um, and now it's time to kind of inspect the brisket and to see kind of how it's turning out. And what you see here is we have kind of a picture of what it should look like. So one of the things that happens when you're cooking brisket then is you have to see that it has different, like different wet and dry spots. You can see I still got the fat rendered on there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my first layer of the mop saw. So what I have here is my mop brush and I have my mop saw ready to go right here. Um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, and I like to hold the thing near because it's no use walking over. I'm gonna basically apply the first layers of mop sauce to the parts of this. And yeah, ooh, it fell off, oh well. Um, but basically, one of the cardinal rules of, of making brisket is you gotta keep it nice and wet. Um, and I like to wait until I'm about an hour in before I apply this first layer of the um, the mop saw simply because um, I want the salt and everything that I used on the rub to kind of start to uh, caramelize. So basically, that's good enough for now. That is the first bit of, uh, of uh, mopping the brisket. But you gotta check in on this guy every 20 minutes or so or, or quicker. And you gotta check your charcoal, you gotta check to make sure it's not getting dried out or overcooked in certain areas. Um, obviously we have a nice healthy fire going. Um, 
And the other thing too you might notice is my vent is probably just a little bit open. The bottom vent is open very very small like that too because we don't want this to be a super hot fire. We want this to be like a long term low and slow type of thing. So the, the ratio or the um, rate at which air flows through it uh, ultimately determines how quickly the charcoal and how hot the charcoal burns. So that's what you got to do every 20 minutes is you have to go through and check your fire, make sure you have enough charcoal, check the status of this and make sure that you keep the thing wet. If you don't keep it wet, you're going to pull off your piece of meat at the end of the day and it's going to be a big chunk of charcoal itself. But if you keep it wet, it's going to continue to be um, this beautiful chunk of uh, fatty slash uh, uh, wonderful juicy piece of meat that uh, God in intended for us to eat. Okay, the brisket's been on for just over eight hours. We've still got like one more hour to go. Um, but one of the things you'll notice is that it changes color. The other thing is that um, this is how it should look. There should be a nice bark on it. It's still developing. Notice that the charcoal is very low and slow. What I've been doing throughout the course of the day, though, is every 20 minutes or so, making sure the charcoal is relatively the same each time. Once it goes down a little bit, I might add four um, or eight chunks, depending on the situation. If the fire's real low, you know, then I do a little more. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to, uh, you know, make sure this, this lady stays wet. If you want to please a lady, you got to keep her wet. And uh, so that's kind of like as we're finishing up um, the brisket. I also see, see my fat chunks down there. I also base those. Um, but yeah, you got to keep this guy uh, nice and wet, and it will turn out to be a very uh, juicy and tender piece of beef. Um, one last thing, too, as I close the lid is um, you know, notice how skinny and like small crescents the lid is. Um, we're not trying to overcook this. We want it to be low and slow. Um, but yeah, that's the big picture right now. Is we, uh, I've been basting the thing the whole the entire time, and then making sure that the fire is correct. Okay, so uh, I put this on a long, long time ago, and it's about ready to come up. Um, so one of the best things, uh, you know, it's correct, and you know how it jiggles when you touch it. That's a good sign. The other thing is you should purchase. Uh, metal pans from Gordon Food Service. It's the absolute best uh, baking pans that you can get. It's from the restaurant industry. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to try to get these motherfuckers on uh, to the baking pan. And because my, my temperature of my fire isn't very hot, I can probably uh, get these guys up off of here fairly easily. Although I see that it's uh, coming a little more difficult than I thought. Nonetheless, I got one up. And I got the second one up. And uh, it is up on the metal. Now here's the other thing about brisket that's tricky. Um, number one is like once you get it on here, you've got to let this bitch rest. And you should tent it and foil. In fact, it's a good practice to do anyway because um, it works for all large pieces of meat, not just brisket, but like if you ever do a prime rib on the grill, or if you ever do a turkey, even in the oven, they tell you that you need to absolutely uh, put it underneath foil and let it uh, settle for about 20 to 30 minutes. And the reason that you want to do that is because any sort of meat or protein that you cook, um, when you're doing it, uh, when you get it real hot, the liquids have a tendency to go this direction, that direction, and every other direction. And they do so based upon the heat of your fire. Um, and what you want before you start cutting into any piece of meat, whether that's turkey or brisket or any other thing that you're making on the grill or in the oven for that matter, is you want those liquids to redistribute themselves evenly throughout the, the protein that you're serving. So in this case, what I have is I have my brisket completely and utterly tented and covered, and I'm working right now to try to make sure the thing is sealed, um, because if you can seal the steam in, you've got yourself a good little uh, steam bath in which 
uh, the brisket can redistribute all of its uh, uh, juices and flavors to the different parts of the brisket. And then one of the problems with uh, aluminum foil is that it moves and stuff as you're working your way through. And you can see even, even in this video. But nonetheless, that's a pretty good seal on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for about 20 minutes, uh, 20, 25 minutes before I even bother cutting it. I'm going to put it on the cutting board and uh, it's probably going to be an A plus brisket because I can feel how tender it still is. But it helps that the juices are going to redistribute themselves throughout the uh, protein, throughout the meat that you have here. So uh, that's pretty much what it looks like when it comes off. You notice it had a nice uh, black bark to it. It's going to be really awesome. So I've already done uh, one of the two points. But one of the best techniques that you can learn to do when you're dealing with uh, brisket and dealing with the point has to do with how you butcher it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this guy on the cutting board, and you're going to need you're going to need this guy. The next thing you're going to need is your serrated knife and your cutting board. What you got to do is you have to kind of shimmy the knife and I'm looking at the fat line. Remember there was a fat line in the previous videos of the brisket. And what I do is I run my knife and I'm doing no work. This knife is doing all of the work. And I work my way through that crevasse and you can kind of see how, how it plays out. And you know that it's correct because you saw all that juice in there. That is how you know you did your brisket correctly. So what I'm doing is I'm going to work my way through and I'm going to butcher this, uh, the, the top of the point off. The top of the point off is the best part of the fucking brisket right there. Sorry, I just dropped a fucking F-bomb. So it's all right because I've been drinking and it's all right. So this is the bottom part and that also is really good. But I'm going to play with... Uh, the best part of it, which is the top of the point. So I'm going to start slicing this guy, and you need a serrated knife for this. And I'm going to slice it in uh, probably quarter inch, half inch slices. I'm going to work my way through it. And you see how juicy that is? Uh, the other thing that you should probably notice is there's a smoke ring right there that works its way. Uh, and that's just as true on the bottom of the brisket as it is on the top of it right there. Notice there's a nice uh, caramelized bark right there. You know, that's correct. So I'm going to work my way through. I'm going to let the serrated knife do most of the work for me. But essentially that is how you uh, butcher the point of a brisket. Is you kind of you work your way through the side of it first and you find the fat line you let the knife do all of the work and then you follow that up with going through the other part of it which is the flat of the brisket so um, I'm gonna finish up uh, the end piece of the point and I'm gonna put those parts that are those are gonna be mine I'm just gonna be honest with you making this video um, those are my parts of the brisket and I'm going to put the top part, the point, right there. I'm going to use that and that and that. And now I'm going to do the, fl the flat of the brisket. And this is the more uh, protein part of it. It's the part of it that you uh, normally see in brisket videos. And you're just going to slice it the exact same way. One little chunk at a time. And notice there's a big fat fat layer, so anybody that comes and picks up their portions, they can cut that off if they want. But notice that uh, there's a smoke ring right there. That tells you that there's a good apple flavor to this thing. So that is exactly what brisket should look like when you're done. Thank you.